Okay, thanks, hey. for that, Daniel. <laughs> hello, everybody. How are we? Hi. 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 Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so this is handling content on the modern web. Uh, so thank you for everybody for, for joining us today. My name is Kaya. I'm the founder of dxpreport.com and Wordify. And I'm joined today by four excellent panelists for this uh, discussion. We've got uh, Debbie O'Brien, head developer mm. advocate at <laughs> bit.dev. Hey, Debbie. Uh, we've got hey. Kent Dodds, <laughs> co-founder and director of developer experience at remix.run. Hey, Kent. Uh, we've got Tracy <laughs> Lee, the CEO of uh, this.labs. And last but not least, we've got uh, Lee Robinson, Director of Developer Operations at Vercel. So again, thank you all for joining me. Thanks. Thanks for having us. <laughs> no worries. And a big thank you to Strappy, of course, for uh, inviting me to moderate this, this great panel. So what we're talking about today is, is handling content on the modern web. We're going to touch on a few different things, um, site, um, static site generation, uh, front-end components, headless CMS, DXPs, what it all means, how it all comes together. I think a good point, place to start this discussion is with, with uh, SSGs, uh, static site generation uh, versus server-side rendering and the potential you know, hybrid solution between the two. Is there, is there a way to sort of marry these two together to get the best of both worlds? Um, and if so, how does this head of CMS fit in? Uh, feel free to jump in to this discussion. Uh, I'm not gonna sort of uh, delegate to one, one single person, but please uh, understand we've got some time restraints, so let's try to get everyone involved. I'm just gonna say static sites for the win. Been saying it for years. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why do you say that, Debbie? Because it just takes away the overhead of like all that server stuff that you don't have to deal with. And the majority, mm -hmm. not not every site obviously will work for just static sites, but the majority of sites out there, the majority of things we're doing will work in static sites. And you don't need to then pay for Microsoft and cloud servers and all these people are paying them loads of money for no reason. You don't need to. You just That's like true. put it on Netlify, put it on Versal, put it on wherever, right? And I think yes. people don't realize the power of static sites. They just think of the boring static because the word is horrible, right? They invented a horrible word. Yeah. Um, and they really don't see that you can do so much. Like I built a whole booking engine on a static site and you can reserve hotels, mm. it's a static site with it. That's yeah. single page application fallback, right? But it has like, you yes. can do that. Yeah, that's interesting. And I, 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 Lee, I saw you nod, nod very enthusiastically when when Debbie said uh, Vercel there. So why don't you tell me a bit more, <laughs> why don't you tell me a bit more about, um, you know, static sites are great. They've got a, a good, um, obviously a fantastic um, purpose, right? When you need static content. But, you know, if you're looking at, I mean, I know Debbie just mentioned a, a use case that maybe goes against what I'm about to say, but if there is a more complex, uh, you know, single page app that needs to be built or something a bit more robust, then obviously you need some dynamic content in there. So what's the solution? What's the solution? Uh, is there a way to, again, grab those benefits from, uh, having static content while having a bit of you know server side rendering sprinkled in. Yeah, I think so. I think there are. I think it's highly dependent on the type of application that you're building, and and even inside of the application, it's even better if you can get that granularity on a per route level. Because for a lot of sites, maybe you want your homepage to be static. You just want to uh, offload as much risk as possible for when. You're trying to render your cover letter of your website, but maybe you have um, maybe you have a logged in part of your application that's behind user auth, and you don't want to have any loading states, any spinners. So you want to put that part behind server rendering. Uh, and each one comes with its own set of pros and cons. But I think the the um, there's some pretty strong benefits for for static in terms of availability and guarantees on performance, but there's also a lot of flexibility that can be gained through server rendering. I'm sure Ken can talk more about too with recent advancements kind of in, you know, cloud computing, I guess could be the generalized term here. Um, it has made, I think that's why the pendulum has kind of um, maybe not swung back, but people are seeing, yes, there was a lot of validity to server rendering. Um, and in an ideal world, I think, those who want to thrive and prosper with static can continue to. And the, the use cases or the solutions for completely server rendered applications um, just get more, more easily adoptable and also faster. Ken? I, I definitely have opinions on this uh, that uh, would take way longer than we have to enumerate. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, I feel like um, the, my, my big issue with static site generation is that when you choose to go that route, 
if you later decide that you want to get rid of pending states, you have to completely change uh, how you've architected your solution. Um, and so it's, it's not so straightforward. And so what inevitably happens is you start with static and you say, this is great. I, I just, it's static files. I build it on Netlify or Vercel and they deploy it and it's, it's magic. And then uh, you realize that you want to have something dynamic on there and you have two choices. You can either have it run at build time, um, but there are a lot of situations where build time isn't going to work. Um, and so like maybe you decide you want to have users uh, like the user avatar or something. You have thousands of users. You're not going to build a page for every user. So uh, you decide, OK, you can't do it at build time. So now I have to choose, do I change this to, static, uh, to a server rendered solution or do I load it in the client and, and give my users a loading spinner? And that's inevitably the choice we go with because it's a lot cheaper, um, but it's a, a worse user experience. And so in my mind, it would be a lot better if we could um, start with the more powerful solution and make it simpler. Um, so, so take the things that we like about static site generation and enable server-side rendering to, uh, to give us those things so that we can architect everything as a, if it's server rendered, um, but get the benefits of static site generation. And uh, we've had this for a really long time, ever since CDNs supported cache headers. And, and so you set the proper cache headers, and all of a sudden, uh, you get all the, the same benefits of static site generation um, for your home page or whatever page you like. And then you later decide, oh, I want something dynamic, and you just change the cache headers. Um, and then you start mm -hmm. caching on the server. And okay. uh, and it, uh, I feel in my experience when I moved my personal website <clears throat> that has like half a million page views a month, so it's it's like a legit like you think. <laughs> um, I think that's legit, yeah. <laughs> from static site uh, to um, server rendering, um, I started realizing that I could say yes to a lot of the fun ideas that I had, um, and and I think that's something that cannot be overstated on how valuable it is to be able to say, hey, product. That idea that you had, yeah, I can do that without um, needing two months to, to re-architect our solution. And so I, I think that we can get the, the benefits of stability and, um, and confidence um, and also have the architecture of server rendering. Uh, and that way, when uh, requirements change, as they always do, uh, it's a lot easier to adapt to those changes. OK. Um, Tracy, uh, over to you. And, and because you've been so patient waiting for your turn, I want to also ask you a follow-up question, which is, have you seen anybody, any, any project, any client, uh, building something really interesting, uh, maybe with, with combining static and dynamic content? <laughs> I don't have that many comments on. I think people are doing interesting things generally. But I mean, I'm totally sold on, uh, can I call it the Kent way? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I recently yeah. attended a training where Kent was talking about all of this and, you know, the benefits of, you know, maybe doing that server-side rendering first. And, you know, I'm I'm kind of sold on it. So I've been, like, diving into Remix lately and, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of excited about the things that, um, you know, this – I don't, don't want to it's, – it's not a new way of thinking, but, you know, like, the world just keeps going around and around and around, right? And I think, like – you know, what we're talking about today and uh, technologies and just like kind of how things are evolving is just kind of like looping back again into like things we already know. So there's a good use case for everything. I just think it depends on like, number one, your geographic area and like number two, what problems you're actually trying to solve. Yeah, along with many other things. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course. Okay, cool. So let's move on to our next point uh, with the with the clock in mind here. So Considering the headless trend, right, the headless CMS trend, the, de the decouple trend, so we sh shall we say, it was all about decoupling the back end and the front end, right? It was all about keeping those uh, separate, uh, separated, unopinionated, so that you know devs could go out and do their thing. But is there an argument for perhaps taking a step back? Are we seeing this in in the in the market, in the industry, even of of, of um, vendors taking a step back and sort of allowing or enabling uh, a, a sort of a loose decoupled environment in certain in certain cases, in certain scenarios? Is that something you're seeing? Is, is there a good argument for that happening? And if so, where, where is that line drawn? Again, anybody can jump in there. I, th I think if you look at all of the different headless CMS options out there, you see people are either, either you know, doing one or the other, right? Like, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess contentful, I feel like, is, is kind of like, 
coupling things a little bit more. But again, it's kind of interesting because you think about like what hell the CMS is trying to do versus like a traditional CMS. And it's saying, okay, this is, you know, completely decoupled. Now, all of a sudden, we're starting to see things kind of like merge together or different solutions yeah. say like, okay, you know, we're going to do it this way. We're going to do it this way that we're going to do it this way. But I think that's the great part about like just innovation in our space period. Like there is a solution for everybody. I don't know what mm. everybody. Else yeah. Is. Yeah. Kent got any, any ideas on this one? I, I actually would like to hear from, uh, from everyone else. I feel like I, I took more than my share of time on the last question. <laughs> cool. Debbie Lee, want to jump in? I can go. Uh, I yeah, think definitely. that when I look at kind of the more modern, not headless CMS, so maybe like yep. the evolved world pre WordPresses of the world, to me, it looks more like um, the page builders, I guess. So closer to a web flow uh, mm -hmm. and less like a WordPress, because you're still able to get the same flexibility of the co-location while... Right while still having the security or performance benefits that you were trying to get by moving to a headless CMS in the first place. But I think for a lot of teams, it's also a function of how their organization works. And sometimes the decoupling of um, content team and engineering team is a really great model for uh, enabling them to move fast too. Yeah, that's a good point. Debbie, anything? Pretty much what, what Lee said, and I've been trying to get companies to go in the headless route for, for many years, and they now it's different, but a couple of years ago, they just, like, they thought this was, like, something from the future, like, they were not ready for it, and, mm -hmm. and it's, like, so important because um, what they're looking for is their marketing people can change content easily and not have to, um, you know, worry about kind of developer stuff, and if the headless CMS can give them that, then, like, there's a massive space for the headless at the moment, massive space. Um, and I think it's yeah. going to grow and get better and better. Absolutely. And, and just to follow up on what, um, what Tracy was saying, which is, you know, we're sort of seeing the, the reverse of what happened initially with everything sort of, um, you know, decoupling. And now everything's recoupling again in different ways, but they are recoupling. Uh, I always get reminded of the, um, uh, it's a, the Jim Barksdale quote. It's a very famous quote. I think he's the um, ex-CEO of NetSuite, or Netscape, if I'm getting that right. He said, there's only two ways to make money in business. And, he's, and he said, there's only two ways to make money in business. And that is bundling and unbundling, right? Bundling things together and then unbundling them. And I think that's what's happened with the headless CMS space or the CMS space in general. We had a bundled CMS where it was tightly coupled, think of WordPress, got unbundled with the sort of headless trend, API first, decoupled, and now we're bundling it together again. And, you know, it seems that, you know, we're going back to where we started, but it, we're just, you know, going, getting there in a different way, I guess. So um, I thought that was a really interesting point from you, Tracy. Um, okay, next point is front end components, right? So again, sort of going along the same trail here. Um, are the headless CMS players in the market offering enough when it comes to front end components? And, and should, they, should they be offering anything at all, right? So what do developers want? Is basically the question I want to ask you. What do developers want from headless CMS? Do they want any sort of direction or opinion when it comes to front end components? Or is it, is it best, best just left untouched by the headless vendors? I'll, I'll go really quickly here. And I, I'd say that um, the, the need of people in the world is vast. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. use cases and needs are, are, um, enormous. Uh, there, there are so many different things. And so, um, some people are, uh, able to, um, be really productive and solve the problems that they have, um, with the, uh, things that the CMS has to offer, um, whether that be, um, code or, or components or uh, just the content piece. And so I feel like um, it, it is highly dependent on your requirements. Um, for the apps that I build, um, I, I wouldn't be able to, to make much use of those sorts of components, but I'm sure there are many who could. Um, so I, I think that it is varied. Okay. Debbie, and I think there's a, a lot of people coming into the industry as well that like kind of need the help in getting going like if you you know if you give me that i'm just like go away no i want to do my own right but yeah. um there's a lot of junior developers coming into the space there's a lot of people and we need we need there's so many jobs out there we need websites like now yesterday so this is yeah. going to help a lot of people get off the ground and i think that's you know there's a definitely a place for it 
Yeah, I would I would agree, and I would say you know not just junior developers. I think there's I think there's a trend now towards you know just non non developers, non technical people in general who who need to get back into doing what they did maybe ten years ago for WordPress, which is you know hey I want to lo- I'm not technical, I'm a marketer, I'm a business person. I want to launch a landing page. I want to launch a micro site for the event we've got coming up. I don't want to have to you know ask the dev team to sort of build that from scratch. So I feel like there is a, a um, you know that need was always there. I think it kind of like got buried under the headless trend. And that, that need is sort of being uh, rediscovered again. Uh, but yeah, Tracy, Lee, feel free to jump in if you've got any opinions on that. Yeah, I, th- I think it's, it's, it's again, like just what is the target market, right? Like um, I feel like Strappy does a really good job at, for example, focusing on developer experience. And I yeah. think a lot of other headless CMSs are, you know, kind of like, you know, I don't, I don't want to say not focused on developer experience, but like yeah. maybe focused like more on, um, you know, how to enable like the marketer or the people producing the content. And then like, do you have this like kind of like middle ground where you have the people who like kind of know a little bit of code, but like not really, but like want that flexibility. But then, you know, again, that's why I think it's so amazing that there are so many um, options out there for headless CMSs because, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe, you know, focusing on front end components and, you know, me being a marketer is going to like really confuse me or maybe as a Mm. marketer, that's something I really want. Or, you know, maybe as a developer, you know, just like Debbie and, and Kent, they're like, well, I don't even need this. So what's going on. But I do love the idea that Debbie uh, brought up, like, you know, the idea of helping, um, all developers, but also junior developers, like being inclusive there of, you know, hey, you know, hello CMS is maybe like are a little bit difficult, but like here are some, you know, guardrails to help you along your journey. Yeah, good point. Good point. Lee, any thoughts? One note is that I, I think in the the current landscape of of headless CMSs, I kind of look at it in three different areas. There's the first area, which is let's say content only, like a blog. Like I just want to fetch some content, put it on a page. It's up to the dev to figure that out. Yeah. Then there's the middle ground, which is I want to scaffold like a completely new marketing page, but all of the visual identity of what that looks like comes from the code. Um, you can still change pieces inside of your CMS. And then the, you know, the galaxy brain final version is like the actual visual page builders that you can get with, you know, on the, on the most uh, non-developer level, like the square spaces of the world. And then to even more modern solutions, like, I don't know, like type dream or like other things that use, uh, MDX or light to kind of merge those worlds together. And mm-hmm. it's, they're all very separate, uh, markets for who wants to use those tools. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. So our next point of discussion is, um, you know, extensibility, right? Uh, and obviously the thing that comes to mind is, is Strappy's newly launched marketplace, right? Plugins, extending the platform. Um, so we spoke about front-end co- components already. I feel like now we should just move into just, you know, why, it, I, I thought again, it's like another trend that's happening, right? I feel like beyond Strappy, we're seeing marketplaces pop up uh, across the industry. We're seeing plugins that developers can just, you know, rather than go and spend two weeks, a month, two months building integration or building, you know, um, you know, uh, some sort of uh, no code form for their for their marketing team or comment section, that kind of thing. We're now seeing plugins come in. And um, again, I think it's a, it's a trend. I think it's a, it's a, it's a much needed trend. But I, I want to I want to hear, you know, from 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 your perspective, what's the benefit there? What's the benefit of headless headless vendors saying, OK, we're going to bring in plugins now so you can go and sort of um, have these features out of the box. And then you as a developer or your development team can go and focus on sort of more innovative things. Well, I think as well, like um, every product out there cannot possibly create absolutely everything because then yeah. you you just you do can't do it right. So we're taking leverage of other people's amazing tools, and they're dedicated to doing say one thing that tool, and they do it well. So why not just yes. use it, right? If you're using search, use Agolia Search because they know how to best do it. So let's just use it. Um, the more we integrate, the faster we can develop, and the faster we can create better things. And it's like all just working as a t- one team. So integration is really important. Cool. And just some final thoughts from uh, from the rest of the team since we're running out of time. And then we'll wrap up if you can. Lee, Kent, and Tracy, got any thoughts on this? I second what Debbie said. <laughs> okay, that's a good way to go. <laughs> Lee, Tracy, any thoughts on this? On the sort of the tugging, tugging trend that we're seeing? I, I just think more in 
generally speaking, extensibility is a great feature for platforms. So yeah, I'm, I'm totally agree on that. Yeah. Tracy, do you agree? Yes. I feel like, um, you know, especially if uh, the extensibility like enables community to build things, you know, one of my favorite, like, I don't know if it's, is it a throwback? Like Ember plugins, if you guys aren't familiar, mm -hmm. or sorry, Ember add-ons, if you guys aren't familiar with it, that. Um, so, you know, I think that's great. And I think that like just generally evolves the community, gets people more involved and, um, you know, it's a good thing in general. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping that part of me was hoping you'd say, no, it's horrible. And like, just drop, <laughs> we, drop a bomb, we drop a bombshell right at the end, but okay. <laughs> I could definitely, I think we all agree that extensibility is good and this whole plugin plug-in uh, phenomenon that's taking over the space is, is a good thing uh, for the development community, especially, and for the whole, for the whole community. Okay, uh, we have reached uh, our, the end of our session. So I want to again thank all four of you for being here. Uh, thanks, Strapi, once again for, for giving us the platform. Um, and yeah, I think that's it from us. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thanks for having <laughs> us. Thanks. Bye-bye.